Before I can explain how radiation can affect plant life, I must first explain what exactly radiation is and how it is able to affect matter. Radiation comes from many places, from the sun, which we'll get to, to things man makes like cell phones, TVs, antennas. Radiation is not always dangerous. Radiation can become very dangerous depending on what kind of radiation it is and how long something is exposed to it. Now, as far as man is concerned, 5G, Wi-Fi, these are dangerous types of radiation. Even tanning booths. But there are two types of radiation, non-ionizing, which is mostly harmless, and ionizing. This high energy ionizing radiation can lead to serious problems within an organism, especially plants. And humans and other biological entities. But tonight we're going to discuss radiation's effects to plant communities. Because it's very important. As the magnetic reversal ensues and continues to be informed on the effects. Radiation energy is transferred by particles or waves. While non-ionizing radiation is relatively low energy, ionizing radiation is so high in energy it can break chemical bonds and change DNA. This means it can change the charge of an atom that it interacts with. At high levels, this can even damage and destroy the nucleus of an atom, directly affecting an organism's DNA. Once DNA is tampered with, all bets are off. An organism can develop dangerous and numerous mutations. It can also develop positive ones to help it survive and thrive in the new environment. Now, how plants are directly affected? Well, you're looking at gamma ray radiation effects. The control is on the left at the surface of the earth. And as you increase gamma radiation, plant growth is obviously stunted. Not only that, in, at just a low dose, you can see some strange branch growth, abnormal perpendicularity on a tomato, and then stunting, and then nothing. The effects of high levels of radiation on organisms, especially plants, can include chromosome chromosomal aberrations defined as visual, visu, visually observable changes in the plant and the chromosome. DNA damage defined as any damage to DNA molecules, including the DNA sequence inversions, TCAG, now GACT, as well as sections of sequences being deleted. There can be growth reduction defined as reduction in the rate of growth, reproduction effects, including sterility, reduction in reproduction rates, occurrence and development abnormalities, reduction in viability of offspring, reduced seed germination, mortality, including both acute lethality and long-term reduction of lifespan, direct burn damage to exposed surface tissue, including plants. Those are some of the effects of radiation on plant communities. Now here's some more effects on plants, specifically gamma, the radiation you're most familiar with. You know, nuclear meltdown, Fukushima much. Green plants are extremely sensitive to gamma rays. As if we were to take some plutonium out to our garden and put it right next door. Plants' re response varies according to age, growth, and stage. Plant species, chromosome volume, and level of radiation. Degree of damage, intensity, and duration of exposure of radiation are important. Is it long-term exposure? Is it a short-term burst? These are all important. So those of you that are asking for uh, an immediate answer on what happens when cosmic rays increase to our plants, well, there's very little information, but... Based on the information that I'm about to share with you, it appears that if radiation levels 
gradually increase, things will evolve. Now, what is a cosmic ray and why are we talking about them? Cosmic rays have reached a new maximum. You are here at the end of solar cycle 24, where the modern maximum of cosmic ray exposure to humanity is occurring now. And it will occur for another year or two before it drops off as we enter solar cycle 25. But it's not going to drop off too far because you can see the low levels have been increasing every solar cycle. And now the next low level is going to be a very high level. And then eventually by solar cycle 26, we will be above the modern maximum. Probably less than 10 or 15 years, we are going to be above this yellow line and remain above it. Now, more importantly, as the magnetosphere wanes, more cosmic rays are going to enter the picture, not just from the, sh the sun shutting down. The sun is shutting down. These solar cycles are getting weaker. We're in a grand solar minimum and we're going to get deeper and deeper into it. Now, cosmic rays are high energy radiation. Remember, the high energy radiation is the dangerous kind to DNA and to life. But while many believe that the direct observational data suggests it's dangerous, geologists and paleoclimatologists know that it also means that evolutionary leaps occur across these boundaries of increased cosmic rays. Now the high energy radiation, which are cosmic rays, originate outside the solar system. They also originate from the sun. There are two types. We have Galactic cosmic rays, GCRs, and solar cosmic rays, SCRs. Now, SCRs come from outbursts from the sun, including micronova, coronal mass ejection, and solar flares. And it is even believed that Distant galaxies are the number one source of galactic cosmic rays. Quasars, pulsars, blazars, and the other nonsense terms that the mainstream uses to explain Z-pinches. As Doug Vogt talks about, points where information begins in our universe. Now, these are supposedly at the center of every galaxy scale in the universe, meaning centers of galaxies, you'll have these Z-pinches, the centers of solar systems at the star, the centers of planets, the centers of atoms. Now, cosmic rays were discovered only recently, as recently as 120 years ago. And the sources, as I said, are galactic and our sun. And here we have the types, galactic cosmic rays and solar energetic particles. And what happens as the cosmic rays enter the atmosphere, they nucleate, they hit the proton collides with an atmospheric molecule and it breaks apart. Pew, pew, pew. Causing radioactive isotopes to form, clouds to nucleate, and the temperature to cool. But what is it going to do to our plants? That's what's important. We know that galactic cosmic rays are dangerous for astronauts, which is why no one's ever going to Mars. Not even a cat. Nope. Nope. Not until we figure out how to block these babies. Now, many of you think that just by going underground that you're going to be safe from cosmic rays. But I have bad news for you. They travel through everything. And they only stop when they hit something. They only stop when they hit something. Like an atom. Like a nucleus. Like a cat. <coughs> yep. That's what happens.
and they stunt plant growth, especially gamma rays. Now, this is just Wi-Fi. This is man-made caused radiation on the surface. Wi-Fi to the left, no Wi-Fi to the right. And you can clearly see that even Wi-Fi is not safe for biology. If it's not safe for a pea shoot, how could it be safe for a human? Some more plants. This is a very classic study done in the 70s. Plants exposed to radiation. You can clearly see here what's happening. You have the control on the right. And as radiation levels occur, different outcomes. Now there is a plethora of scientific information on this topic. Just put, on, put into Google or your whatever search engine you have, radiation and plant effects, radiation and biology, galactic cosmic rays and plant effects, whatever it is you're looking for. And you'll get a cacophony of information, which we will share you below. Here's a paper, Cosmic Ionizing Radiation Effects in Plant Seeds After Short and Long-Term Duration Exposure Flights. So these papers, this one back in 94, are done to see if it is even safe to have astronauts go into space. Recent comparison of biophysical data obtained in orbital flights in short and long duration led to results which will be significant for long and repeated stay of man in space. Now this was, you know, some of the papers coming out on their cockamamie idea that man was going to go to Mars. The effects of sparsely and densely ionizing radiation on plants back in 2011. This paper just does not want to load because it's from Chernobyl. Now, some of the most important papers I'm going to share with you in this short video are very long. Here's a 41-page paper, Effects of Ionizing Radiation on Non-Human Biota, Everything But You. And this is an amazing paper that has a wonderful bulleted lists to keep you interested. And real quick, I want to come down here to 17, I think. Some conclusions by the Chernobyl Forum expert group on the environment. Numerous acute adverse effects in the biota located in areas of high exposure. Increased mortality of coniferous plants, soil invertebrates and mammals. Reproductive losses in plants and animals. Chronic radiation sickness of animals. Now, beyond the exclusion zone, this is moderate radiation. No acute radiation-induced effects. That's good news. And by the next growing season following the accident, population viability of plants and animals substantially recovered. That's evolution. And as a result, the combined effects of reproduction and immigration, few years needed for recovery from major radiation-induced adverse effects on plants and animals. So from this study, we have very good news that it is local, it is short-lived, and that biology rebounds, as it always does. All the links to all these papers and abstracts will be below. <clears throat> We're going to finish on that paper, but real quick, if I can load this up, which I won't, won't let me do it. I apologize. Cosmic radiation makes trees grow faster. N more good news. 2009, the BBC reports that researchers at the University of Edinburgh have found that galactic cosmic rays, GCRs, somehow make trees grow faster. And just right click on this to figure out what that means. Galactic cosmic rays vary according to the 11 year solar cycle. Here you see them up and down. And each time it, they peak, trees grow better. So trees are growing really nice now. And here's the cosmic pattern in U UK tree growth to prove the solar cycles are in there. 11 years, 11 years, 11 years, 11 years. 
You can see it in the rings, baby. Cosmic radiation makes trees grow faster. We've had trees on this planet five, six, two thousand feet high in the past. Now, unclassified, as we close tonight, Armed Services Technical Information. This is CIA. Guess what they're studying? The effects of cosmic radiation on plants. Back in 1962. 24 pages of classified information for you to peruse. Cosmic rays are your future. The magnetic reversal is upon us and the grand solar minimum all simultaneously predict more radiation entering the environment. You're living the modern maximum. For the next two years, you're being irradiated from cosmic rays. Now, this will be an increase in cancer, but it will be a minor effect. It will not register in the human population. 100,000 or more cancers annually from cosmic rays will blend in to the diet soda cancers that are in the millions. The time is now to start learning how to grow your own food. Learn how to local source meat if you eat meat. Know who grows it. Wild craft, wild harvest your food. Because the plants that are becoming immune to this radiation probably have some DNA that you need to eat. Buy local, buy fresh. GMOs are for suckers. Cosmic rays are going to continue to increase. Humanity and biology has always made it through these flexure points, magnetic reversals included. Evolution occurs. There is almost no way to mitigate the effects of cosmic rays. There are no shields. The other types of radiation that are going to be entering our atmosphere affecting plants can be mitigated with shade tarps. I use Solex on all my rigid greenhouses because it diffuses the light, makes it less severe. 20% diffusion, no shadows. Are you preparing? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Keep following Magnetic Reversal News for the news you need to know. And most importantly, proper prior preparation prevents piss-poor performance. Be safe.